I feel very strongly like the, the real way to, to get into Irish traditional music is learning the tradition. You can't come in from outside. You have to understand the rhythm of it um, and the simplicity of it, that rhythm. Without putting all these ornaments and getting very fancy too quickly, you lose the sense of the tune. Here in this house in Dublin lived one of the most extraordinary Irish traditional musicians, Tommy Potts. In my opinion, he ranks with Carolyn and Sean O'Reilly as one of our great musical innovators. Yet so few people seem to know who he was, and even less seem to understand the nature and depth of his musical genius. You see, Potts did something that no outsider can do. He exploded the music from within. History may yet show him to be a brilliant cul-de-sac, or it may show him to be a musical prophet. Here is something coming from the people. It's coming from the ground up, as distinct from being an officially uh, imposed state ideology, which is going nowhere. And that out of that then, with the, I mean, the magic of Orida, with the, the genius of Orida, comes a musical revival, which is both pure at one level, and at the same time, achieves an extraordinary popular resonance. And I think that a lot of the, the response, of course there's natural exuberance and enjoyment of, of, a, of a, just a wonderful experience, but a lot of it, I think, comes from deeper recesses that that generation itself didn't know it had. And when it found itself responding, again unconsciously, it was proud it had them, uh, it was delighted it had them. And there's a blend of both natural enjoyment and exuberance of youth with a feeling, in a sense, this allows us to belong to a community whose existence we couldn't have imagined without it. I think that uh, when you have a vibrant, living, uh, traditional music, that it's going to change. Uh, it doesn't really have to be encouraged, it's going to happen. I think that it shouldn't be a cause of any concern because that development will be true to its roots. It, it's, uh, it's always reseeking those roots. On the one hand, you feel everything opening up. When, when a flute begins to play, or the first note of the pipe goes, it just opens ahead, and, and your, your, your spirit is given permission to gallop on. I mean, this great sense of open space. But paradoxically, also, there is in that or sound a great call back. I mean, you're actually, you're actually linked in backwards and opened up forwards. And that is part of the acceleration of it. That's part of the, the jubilation of listening to it. Every sound I make seems to come from a gesture. Whether it's the piano or any other instrument, it's the actual gesture that seems to produce the particular style of sound. So in fact, gesture is everything.
When the great hero of Irish mythology, young McCool, was asked what his favourite music was, he replied, it's the music of what happens. And as an academic, I began to realise in the 1970s and 80s that there was a growing field which was called ethnomusicology, the anthropology of music, and Irish music was not in there at all. So the whole thing was bringing them together. One way of doing that is to link Irish traditional music to the global musical heritage.
a key value of the academy is this healing of the divide between theory and practice. The Irish World Academy is the first place in Ireland that has made it a priority to bring the two of these together. One image that's very strong for us is this one of between the poetic and the practical. So that, you know, in, in the creative enterprise, you need to draw on all those practical skills of specialist learning and the, the tools of your trade. But then that has to dialogue with something unknown, you know, that spark, that thing, that, that's the, the, the poetic. important thing is the thing that we don't yet know exists and that gap between what we teach and what we learn and what may happen in the future that gap can only be bridged through some kind of creative leap some kind of leap of faith and you can't construct the bridge for people all you can do is create a kind of an environment where it's more likely that somebody's going to take that leap